Welcome to Rogue Academy's Intro to Shadow Theater. My name is Mark. I am a Rogue Artist Ensemble member. I am a puppeteer and a shadow enthusiast. So today, I'm going to talk to you about how you can take objects from around your home and use them to create your own special moments of shadow theater magic. Now, shadows are as old as the earth itself but the first evidence of shadow theater is a little over 2,000 years ago. And historians aren't exactly sure where shadow theater originated, but they believe it was somewhere in either Central Asia or India. There are an incredible number of shadow theater traditions all across the world, many of which are still alive and performing today. If you would like to learn more about the actual traditions that are taught in these various shadow theaters, I'm gonna provide some links in the description below, and I highly encourage you to do some further research. We're gonna be talking about shadow theater in terms of the three elements that are required to make a shadow. And those are a light source, an object, and a projection surface. Now, all three of these elements are required in order to see a shadow. So we're going to be talking about a little bit of optics, the study of light, and what to be looking at when you're thinking about what light source to use, what object to use, and what projection surface to use. Here we go! First up, let's talk about your light source. When you're working with shadows, there's two kinds of light that you're working with. There's diffused light and there's direct light. Diffused light comes from a large source of light, which means when you're casting a shadow on an object that isn't directly against a screen, you'll get a soft shadow. And that's when you have a blurred out or fuzzy shadow because the light source is coming from a large area that is then casting many different rays of light in the same spot. A diffused light helps to erase the rods from the shadow. Other sources of diffused light, a large open window, the sun, a really bright room. The other source of light is direct light, and that's when you have a really small source of light. A great example of this would be single LED flashlights. If you see the yellow square right in there, that is all the light is coming from. So you have a really small pinpoint source of light. And that means when you're casting a shadow on an object, you get a crisp, clear shadow, no matter how close or far the object is from the screen. The downside of this is that if you're using objects with rods, they won't disappear like they will with diffused light. The upside of this is that you can play with the scale of the puppets, because as the puppet gets closer to the light, it'll be bigger on the screen. As it gets further away, it'll be smaller and closer to the true size of the puppet. So flashlights like this are great because they have that tiny little LED in there. What you want to do is to take the lens off, so you just have a straight shot from the light to the puppet to the screen. You most likely have a perfect source of direct light right in your pocket, your cell phone. But this flashlight will cast a great direct light shadow. And that means you're gonna get a really sharp, crisp, and clear shadow. And that's light. Now let's talk about the object. And this would be your shadow puppets or anything that interacts with the light source in a way that casts an image onto your projection surface. Cardstock, your cereal box, manila envelope, anything that is stiffer than paper, but not as thick as cardboard. And then once you find those materials, you can draw out whatever image you would like on it, cut it out. The other thing to look for are transparent materials. Plastic bottles, plastic wrapping, dryer sheets, more plastic, things that refract light. As the light goes through the object, it bends and distorts in a way that casts an image of that piece onto the screen. And finally, you wanna find objects around your house that are reflective. The bottom of that takeout container piece of a can. If you have any clear bottle and have a liquid inside, especially a colored liquid, I just put a couple of drops of food coloring in this one, but you could even use punch if you had it. And if you cast the light through, you can get really cool effects as the water and the liquid inside the bottle refract the light. 
It makes a really fun effect on the screen. Grab your flashlight and run around your house and see what you can find that is opaque, what is transparent, what's reflective and what's refractive, and just have fun playing around with what these different objects do and how they interact with your light source. Grab them all up and come back here. Similar to the light source, there are two main kinds of projection surfaces that you'll be working with. And that is either a front projected surface or a rear projected surface. A front projected surface is when both the light source and the viewer are on the same side of the projection surface. Anything can act as a front projected shadow surface. Rear projected surfaces are when the light source and the viewer are on separate sides of the projection surface. And that means you wanna be a lot more specific about what that surface is. Typically, you want your rear projected shadow surface to be a translucent material. And that means that you can see light coming through the material, but it's not clear enough that you can actually see what's happening on the other side. You can only really see if it's light or dark. An example of this would be bed sheets, paper, or my personal favorite, a shower curtain. So what you really need to create a shadow theater is a projection surface and a frame to hold that surface up. Something sturdy that you can wrap your surface around. I'm gonna show you how I made a quick shadow theater out of a cardboard box. So I take a box and I cut it in half, all the way around. Then I go on this side of it and I, if you can see here, I cut out almost all around that back side. There's only just a little bit of cardboard left around the edges. And then I took this paper and I taped it against that surface really tightly. So that if you look in here, you can see this little area in here will act as a bit of shading for your shadow screen. So this will be the side that you want the audience to look at because it'll make it darker right around the front of the screen. So even if you have lights around, it won't impact the shadow screen as much. Yeah.
that's it for our introduction to shadow theater, but there is so much more to explore in the world of shadow. So please let us know, uh, tag Rogue Artists Ensemble if you make anything after watching this video. We would love to see what you work on. I would love to see what you create. And I hope you enjoy exploring the wonderful world of shadow. Keep scheming and dreaming.